Welcome to VMware Explorer 2022. My name is David Stamen, a principal field solutions architect focused on platforms at Peer Storage. And today we're gonna to talk about how to build and publish a PowerShell module to the PowerShell gallery. Here at Peer, I focus on our platforms, which means I cover our virtualization and our cloud solutions. This includes VMware, Citrix, Hyper-V, Kubernetes, and our cloud-based services within AWS as well as Azure. I am an AWS community builder, a VMware V expert, as well as a VMware code coach. You can follow along on my blog at davidstamen.com and also find me on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn. And then you can also connect with me on GitHub to look at some of my sample code. So today we're gonna to talk about kind of the way that the PowerShell modules have progressed. How it used to be not too long ago was somewhat difficult. In the past, every time you wanted to use a PowerShell module, you actually had to go out and manually download the PS1 file and manually import it at the beginning of your script. And in the old days, whenever you would write a script, you would always have to make sure that import that module or add that PS snap in. And you knew that you were gonna have an issue that when you went to run that script and all of a sudden you saw a whole bunch of red errors, it means, well, you probably forgot to do it. And you always had to put this in every single script and you always had to know every single module that you were calling and what that would actually utilize. So what has changed recently is I would almost say the future has happened. There no longer is a need to manually import those PowerShell modules with all of your scripts. We're now in the future. So now what you do is you actually install a PowerShell module. This can be done offline by downloading the NuGet files, or it can be done through the PowerShell gallery, which is gonna be the easiest way of you have internet access. There's no need to manually download modules anymore and find them. What you do is you go to the PowerShell gallery and search for the module that you want. In this case, we're gonna be utilizing VMware PowerCLI. And so what we are gonna do is type install dash module and then the module name. And what this means is it'll automatically go out and install the modules. What's important here is every time you go and call a commandlet, it'll automatically import the module as needed. So there's no need to have to manually import this at the beginning of all your scripts or whenever you wanna run one of the commandlets ad hoc. So I would say very easy and really a nice benefit with this overall solution. What also gets a little bit easier is when you go to update that PowerShell module. All you have to do again is go to the PowerShell gallery and run update module and then the module name. What's also important to know is that when you do run an update module, it will not uninstall the previous versions. And so if you wanna make sure you are no longer using the previous versions, you might wanna go ahead and run an uninstall module and then reinstall it. Or once you do the update, just go in and remove that old particular version. So what happens if you have something you actually wanna publish? Well, that's what we're gonna co cover today. How can we build and publish a PowerShell module to the PowerShell gallery? When we look at this, traditionally when we're writing a module, there's normally a reason why we're doing this. In the case of when I wrote my first module, what I wanted to do didn't exist. And I wanted to go ahead and update my vCenter and manage my vCenters through an API policy without actually having to use an API. And so what I did is I used a couple tools to extract and write these functions. And so these modules can be code, they can be functions, they can be scripts, they can be reports. They can truly be whatever you want. Um, if there's something that doesn't exist that you wanna do, then that's traditionally where we would write these. If you wanna do something, but you don't know the specific code that you wanna use, well, there's some really great developer tools built into the vSphere client. And so on the left, we have the, the code capture and the API Explorer. So on the left, if you wanna go ahead and know what API to call, well, you can explore the API, execute them, see the responses and know what is actually to be expected when you utilize that. And then you could put that into your function. But if you don't know where to start at all, on the right-hand side is code capture. What it really is allows you to do is actually hit record and execute a task within the vSphere client. And then once you stop recording, it'll actually output all the code that it took to actually run that command. And then from there, you can export it into PowerShell, into .NET, into Python, Ruby, really a couple different languages. Um, if you end up doing that record and nothing spits out, what that probably means is that there's no actual public API available for that. And you might need to go down a different solution, but as long as it is a public API, that will work amazing for it. So really simplifies this for you. 
When we go to write a PowerShell script module, there's traditionally a couple options. The most common type is a script module, which is what I just highlighted. You take a script, you put a function, and you put it into a, a PSD file. You then also have some not so common types, such as a binary or dynamic. A binary module contains compiled code based off of a .NET framework. So it's essentially an executable that gets installed. I would like to say it's not as open source friendly because you can't actually see the command list and the functions that are built in. And it's really good when you're sharing code to be able to very rapidly innovate with that. And then in order to really use any of these module types, what we need is a module manifest. The module manifest is what contains all of the information about the module. And so that's very important as you're publishing it to make sure it's trusted. When you create a module manifest, this has details of what is a root module, what is the module version, the GUID, the author, company name, copyrights, descriptions, if there's any dependencies of other modules, um, any type of private data, and what functions do you actually want to export so they can be automatically called. And so you can go out and build this all manually, but there's not really a great reason to do it that way. What I prefer to do is use the PowerShell command lets to be able to do that. And that is the new dash module manifest. What you'll do is you'll pass in the path to the module, the module version, your author, and really any of the other parameters that you want. These are just some of the base requirements. Once you do that, that'll actually put out that PSD file, which is that manifest. If you happen to create it manually or updated it manually, again, there is a test module manifest. We'll make sure that it actually is proper and it's not going to error out when you go to publish it. And then if you ever have to update your modules, well, you'll also want to update your module manifest and maybe increment the module version. Um, maybe you change the, a function, you have to add that. Maybe you there's a new author or a new company name. Again, you can go out and do all of this. And again, these command lists make it very, very easy. And then now that was the hardest part. The next step, what we actually have to do is publish the PowerShell module. In order to do that, you'll have to log into the PowerShell gallery and create an account. Once you go to your account, you have the ability to create an API key. And this API key will be created with specific scopes. You can push new packages, push only updates, you can remove packages, and then you can also set the expiration time. So by default, you can have it 365, you can have it 30 days, you can have it more often, um, or again, you can do it longer. It really depends on your specific environment and how you're utilizing these keys and how often you're using them. So what happens is if you ever accidentally share this key, you can always regenerate it. And if you ever forget what that key was, you can also go ahead and update that and remove any of those old keys. Once we have that key, it gets very simple to go ahead and publish that module. This time you will need to manually import it this one time, just so it's registered within your module extensions. But then from here, what you'll do is you'll do a publish module, specify the module name, and then specify that API key. From here, it'll automatically push all the needed components to the PowerShell gallery and publish it with that manifest and that script or function that we created. And if you have another type of module, which is a script module, again, publish script, specify the path to the module, specify the API key, and it'll go out and do that. Again, if you went to publish this and you didn't know your key, quick shortcut here to be able to do that. So pretty quick, pretty straightforward. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump into a demo of what this would actually look like to be able to update a module, publish it, build it, and then see what we can do to download that and get that working. So let's move forward and, and talk about that. All right, live demos are always fun, so let's kick this off. The very first thing we're going to do is kind of just look at the PowerShell gallery. This is where we can look at all the packages that are available, how to download them, get information on them. So what we're going to do is let's start with just the basic one. Let's look for a VMware module. Here we can look for VMware and all these come up. But let's be a little bit more descriptive. Let's do VMware.PowerCLI. We can see here that there's a module. We can see a minimum PowerShell version. We can see how to install it, the author, copyright, package details, as well as all of the versioning. We can download it and install it directly from the PowerShell gallery by using this module. We can install it and deploy it through Azure Automation. And if we're deploying this to a machine that may not have internet access, we can actually download the raw package file and install that manually. And again, all types of metadata over here on the left. But for us, right, we're going to install the module that we have just created. So 
Like we mentioned before, the very first thing we need to do is manage our API keys. So what I'm going to do is go ahead here and create a key name. Let's just call it demo module two, because we don't want this key to be utilized again, and we'll just let it expire in a day. We're going to create it for one day, allow it to push both package versions and updates. Um, we can give it the ability to unlist packages. Um, and then for patterns, let's just go ahead and use an asterisk. So it can do a, go ahead and update any repository. From here, we are going to hit create. And at this point, we can go ahead and copy our API key. What's also important to know that we can go ahead and keep that um, secure. In the event it ever does get compromised, we can either delete it or regenerate it. So now that we have that key, let's go ahead and go to our Visual Studio Code. Um, I really like this again for all of my automation and testing. We can see here we have our VM cluster info. If I look in my current directory, I have a readme file. So again, I might upload this to GitHub. Always important to have that. A logo file if we want to go ahead and publish that logo along with it to the PowerShell gallery. And then we have our module. But the second step after we created our module, we created that API key, there's also that, that missing piece. Any module that is installed to the PowerShell gallery is required to have that module manifest. So what we're gonna do is create a new module manifest. We are going to specify the path where our module is currently living, which is right here. Well, actually the, the path is gonna be the actual path to the directory of where we want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same um, file name as object name. Just change ahead PSM1 to PSD1. That is the manifest. The next thing we're going to do is, again, all of the metadata that exists. If I do a, a tab completion, we can see there are many, many pieces that we can add. But for this particular scenario, when you go ahead and create a module manifest, there's a requirement of at least two of these. The rest can be automatically generated. And that is gonna be the author and the description are what is gonna be the requirements. But there's other things you're probably gonna to wanna to set just to make sure. Um, and so that is, again, is very important. So for the author, let's go ahead and um, put my name for the description say this is a demo module um, i like to go ahead and put the root module which is going to be that demo dash module two that is the name of my module we're going to want to go ahead and specify a module version and again i have been doing some testing so i'm going to go ahead and increment this a lot so for fun today, I'm going to name this version 5.0.0. And then with this, we can go ahead and specify pass through. What that will do is also share that manifest file to the console. If we scroll through this, this is where we can see we created the module on the date, the root module, module version, compatible versions, the GUID, the author, company name, pretty much all of these items. Again, like we said, we can also modify all of this manually. What's also important to note that you can do a test dash module manifest and specify the path and then specify your manifest file. What this will do is we'll review that it is currently a great module, whether that manifest works. If there are no errors, we can proceed with publishing. There's also gonna be a couple other best practices that are normally done, looking at doing a script analyzer or other stuff. Now that we validated that our module manifest works, let's go ahead and publish our module. What I'm gonna do is type publish dash module. We're gonna specify the path to the module. So since I'm in the current directory, it's going to do that. If we wanna specify the repository, that will be the PS gallery. If you are doing this to a local repository or some other type of custom ones, you're more than likely to use that. And then the last thing we're going to do is do the new get API key. 
and specify that key. Again, we're gonna remove this afterwards, so please don't try to use them. And again, this module might have some exported functions. It's also recommended to do that. We can add it to functions to import. And again, in this case, I'm going to just use the generic one, have it export all of them. Again, not always the best practice, but we're just going through the basics here right now. If we go ahead and look back to the PowerShell gallery and search for our demo module two, we can see here that it was last updated today. Again, version 4.1.3 was there. Looks like we just pushed version 5.0. So again, we can see all of those revisions. So again, what we can do is install it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this here so we don't have to type it out. To look at the fact that this worked, if we do that get-vm cluster info, well, that may or may not respond right in this case because it hasn't been properly installed. We also don't have the latest version of this. So what I'm gonna do is do a update-module, demo-module two. In this case, I had a previous version of it installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just download the latest version. If you wanted to install it from scratch, right? You didn't have this on a machine. You would do the install dash module name, specify the module. So now what we can do is validate that if we do a get dash VM cluster info, we can pass in our server name. We can pass in our username, which was our test user, our password to be password one and our cluster which is our management cluster. So again, really great way to kind of put something into retrospect, have it able to be shared and utilize this. I really hope this was useful and you can find a benefit of this. Again, if you ever were to make any changes to the script, maybe add in an additional function, you had a typo, you needed something to correct, make sure to always go back in and update your module manifest and increment that version. There's traditionally some best practices by using the three tier version codes. Um, the first one would be a primary update, any type of major update. A second one could be potentially updating commandlet, something along those lines. And then the third octet is traditionally um, a bug fix or, or some type of incremental approach. So let's go ahead and jump back to the slide deck real quick. So thanks for watching the demo. I have many other examples of code available on my blog. So again, go to davidstamen.com or scan this QR code. And don't forget to take the survey. I really appreciate all the feedback that everybody has for me. And thank you very much for attending the session. I hope to see you at the next one.